Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for stopping by once again. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about some events that have gone on over the last day or two uh, that give us an indication of how this new administration that just took office on July 1st, how it, in both terms of, of style and substance, how they operate. And it's, I think, very interesting. And then some additional information, too, on the countries in general. So let me begin with the beginning here. And the, the issue is very simple. Without going into all the detail, uh, the new administration did a thorough review of the financial situation upon its arrival. There had been some concern that debt had grown higher than had been reported and that, in effect, you might say, had been pushed down the road so that it wouldn't be seen too quickly. Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. What was found was that there was a substantial amount of debt more than had been uh, really discussed uh, publicly by the, by the government, the prior administration. This really, I'm trying to be careful here because I'm not interested in the political aspect of this at all. But I am concerned with the financial aspect. So this government was confronted immediately with the realization that they had a situation that they had to deal with. And if they didn't, it was going to cause much worse problems down the line. And the pressure's on, of course, from the rating agencies, the banking industry, everything else, you know, what do you, the people, investors, and so on, uh, who are very supportive of Panama. I mean, we're the, we're the golden haired guys, so to speak, because we have, uh, such a much better record than the others in Latin America, quite frankly, across the board. And now that we're the highest per capita in GDP, too, as of last year, uh, we're getting more attention, and we're expected to do well. We're expected to stand apart from the others and, and do a better job of things. And this didn't, this didn't look good at all. And the, this administration sat right down, and they dealt with it. And what they did uh, was they took on debt, all right? They put out international bonds for they issued them over the last couple of days. This is very, very, very rapid. Uh, and they had no problem finding people to snap them up uh, because we have a very good reputation uh, for paying these bills and nobody and it being secure and stable society and everything else. But it was very bold sort of action. Let's see if I've got the details um, handy here. Here we go. Yeah, um, it was about a $2 billion affair that we had to deal with. And for those of you who are from Europe, uh, Americans use billion in the way that some of you use 1,000 million. So that's 2,000 million uh, or 2 billion. I'll use billion just because it's my habit. It's easier. Now, they put out two bond issues, and one was for one and a quarter billion, one billion, two hundred and fifty million dollars. And that was a standard, let's see, that's a 10-year note. We have, uh, we paid 3.1 percent. That's incredibly low. I mean, that's really, really low for a small nation like ours. Uh, 3.1, let's put it this way, in Costa Rica, they pay 9 percent for that, and they don't get that much money. If they were going to go for that much money, they'd probably have to pay more. Uh, we also, that is to take care of a whole series of expenses that need to be cleared out of the way immediately. And then an additional $750 million, uh, this is interesting, this one is done over a 40-year period, uh, which will reduce the amount of money has to go in each year to pay it. Of course, it, you're well aware of the fact that it increases the total amount of debt over time. But if you were getting, if you were Costa Rica and we're having to pay 9% for 10 years, what we'd have to pay for 20, 40 years <laughs> would be double digit. It would be way, forget it, just way high. So traditionally, they're going to ask for considerably more if you're going to go out that far out. In this instance, they asked for and received 3.8%. Now, actually, the government when it set out, they thought they were going to have to offer more in both instances, and instead the demand for them was so intense that they were able to lower the, what they were offering and they didn't have any effect on the interest. People want those, those bonds, so they have them. 
And with that money, uh, we're taking care of this debt situation. Much of the money was owed to people right here in Panama, the private sector who supplied services and goods, but also to others elsewhere. A lot of things that needed to be paid should have been paid, had not been paid on schedule, were way delayed and held back, this sort of thing. And uh, this administration wisely, in my mind, has decided we're, we'll get the money, we'll pay this off, we'll get the money into the hands of the people. Uh, so they have something to spend. I mean, if we want to get the economy moving again, this is one way to do it, is to pay for what you've already purchased and you haven't paid for yet. <laughs> it's their money, so let's get that done. And that's as good a reason as any to, uh, to if you have to go into debt, you go into debt and you get it done. And it's had a terrifically positive reaction across the board. I'm impressed that they moved so very quickly. They just sucked it up. They took responsibility. They went in, they got the funds, they got rewarded richly by such low rates to have to pay. That for, even though they didn't want the debt, at least they got the low rates for sure. And uh, because they are using that money uh, for the people, to pay the people who need it and who deserve it, who provided goods and services and have been delayed in payment, including some government agencies uh, that weren't being paid for their work. I mean, come on. This doesn't make any sense. So that's taken care of now. I think it's going to, it is meeting with very positive guys. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, that's all I'm saying is that. We all regret that the debt is there, but it's being taken care of in this fashion, and it makes us look responsible and respectable, which we are. <laughs> and uh, it's what keeps us at the very top of the, uh, of the list in terms of, um, in Latin America, in terms of many different things, including our ratings with uh, the agencies, the international agencies, we're among the highest. We're just a step behind Chile. We'll catch up with them. <laughs> good people that they are. Okay, so that's just something to mention. In addition, the whole public, of course, we it's a small country. We're all following the entire thing every day. And uh, the reaction so far is positive. And the announcement today of the uh, Consumer Confidence Index here in Panama was a substantial increase from a year ago. We don't take it very often. They don't have it from prior election years, so we can't compare it to that. But we can say, uh, compared to a year ago, it's a major increase, and I'm, I'm not surprised. And as is typical for any new administration takes office, it tends to be this sort of honeymoon period at the beginning. But in this instance, I think the fact that it's real progress is being made, and, and it's not just the money side of things. There are other areas, too. Uh, I say good for you, President Cortijo, and I hope you continue in this line, and I leave it to you and to the Assembly to make the decisions as to what's best for the country in the long run, but I'm delighted that it's moving and it's in progress, and it seems to me that everybody's working together and cooperating, and that's so critical, and I do wish I could see that happening in a lot of other countries, <laughs> so congratulations on that. Okay, now I just wanted to mention that, and with this increase in confidence, and as things happening, it will help us prepare to lay the foundation for working with our real estate situation. There's some activity there. This, everyone's very much aware of this, too. But it's primarily aimed at uh, middle-income Panamanians, not so much from the expat viewpoint. But they, uh, a lot of things are happening. I'm going to be talking about those separately. So that will come in the future. Now, I've got a, just a few little things to share with you here, and uh, I'm going to take one minute here to put them together, and I'll be right back. I'm back again. Took a little longer than I expected. I ate dinner in the process. Now, uh, I wanted to share a little extra information with you, uh, and graphically, in this case, it gets the point across better as a rule. And one of those myths that some folks bring down, understandably, given the past, and the fact they have no experience in this area, is that Panama is predominantly an agricultural country, or that is a significant portion of our economy. And that is not the case at all. Now, 50, 60 years ago, that was very much the case. Prior to uh, the late 20th century, agriculture was very definitely a major factor. Now, let's take a look at this map I'm going to put up for you. This, here we go. This is uh, exportations of agricultural products uh, by the, for five of the nations, the five nations of um, Central America, 
and Panama. Now, there are four different agricultural products used for this particular example here. It's not terribly important to my point, but anyhow, for the record, uh, coffee indicates the proportion for each country that's from uh, brown, pardon me, indicates the proportion for each country that goes for uh, coffee. That's the dollar value. Um, banana sales are green, sugar is blue, and pineapple is yellow. Okay, now the four of these are the major agricultural products that we ship out, or people in this region. If you see in the far upper left, you see a fairly good sized circle up there. That is Guatemala. Uh, they are particularly noticeable for bananas, but they have coffee and they have sugar and so forth. Um, quite substantial, and directly to the right is another similar size. Uh, this is for Honduras, although they're more coffee related. In between them, in, in, in just below them is the much, much smaller circle of El Salvador. El Salvador is a country about 30% the size of Panama, but it has one and a half times the population of Panama, so it's very densely, densely populated. They don't have a lot of agricultural land, and they still put out a considerable amount of food. Now, Nicaragua is the next one down the line, and it's, again, it's Percentage of coffee is about three quarters of their total. Uh, this is hurt very badly, though, by violence last year, and it's going to probably look pretty bad for a while yet to come. They're in bad shape, very poor country. And then finally, there is Costa Rica. It is uh, the biggest producer and exporter of agricultural products, basically because it's the king of pineapples. There's no question about it. Now, that little tiny mostly green <laughs> circle down there at the bottom is Panama. So basically speaking, if Panama ceased to produce any agricultural exports at all uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., the market as a whole would hardly even notice it. To say we're not an agricultural country, <laughs> country is, I think, pretty clear from this particular uh, map. And I just wanted to share that with you, give an idea of what a dramatic difference it does make and why quite one more reason why we are frequently not included as part of Central America. We're not traditionally thought of as part of Central America, and we just don't. And we get less and less like them every year, is what it boils down to. Okay, that is that. And I wanted to finish with one more photo here, if I can find it. I'll get it up. Okay. This is uh, not a photo. This is an artist's rendering because it's not quite done. This is the new convention center. That's the city in the background there. Um, the convention center will be should be done, they say, in September. I, I will not hold my breath. <laughs> We've been waiting a long time for this. It's very much delayed. One hopes it's definitely going to be ready uh, at that time so we can begin to promote it for use over the cold winter months in the north. Uh, sooner rather than later, uh, we'll be happy. Uh, now, it's very large. It would deal with tw at least 20,000 delegates easily. It could be used for upwards of 25,000. Now, there are much larger convention centers in some countries, but this is, will be the largest, uh, larger than anything else in Central America or the Caribbean. And we will be able to compete with them and with Miami, Las Vegas, and Houston, other areas that have also uh, got convention centers in the U.S. We're perfectly located in the middle of Latin America for people to come from all over uh, for a conference. And it's very simple to come in. And, well, we, we don't have a lot of immigration security as the U.S. has, for example, for people to go through and all that hassle. So we're really a very good location for it. We just didn't have a convention center that could handle enough people to uh, attract many of the uh, mid-sized and larger conventions that we were not able to handle with our much smaller conventions that are at, uh, called at LAPA. So that's it. It looks, I've seen video of the inside of it. It looks beautiful. I hope it is. And in any event, I just wanted to share that with you. That will be one more project that will be joining us, and it too will have a major impact on, uh, oddly enough, real estate, because it does, these conventions bring in large numbers of people uh, who are, whose bills are paid for by somebody else. Uh, they go all over the place. They go and do things. They, they have uh, tours set up for them and everything else. It's quite, quite an affair, as I'm sure some of you know who attended these 
major conventions. Uh, that's what attracts a lot of people to the possibility of living here. So we're, we're very much looking forward to the construction of that. And that brings it up to a conclusion. I'll just mention to you that if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscription button and press the little bell beside it. Ring the bell, and uh, that means you'll get the regular, um, the immediate notification of videos when they go up. And I will also, in the description below, again, put in the address, the web address, to pick up a copy of uh, my annual report here. I may do another one this year, but this is this is it for a while. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive. Has no advertising, no sales, no pitches for anything. It's just a report. It gives you a lot of background and information on the country and where we're headed as we begin a new administration and as many of these major products uh, projects are finished up, and we start a new phase basically in. Uh, the development story of Panama. So thank you for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.